Stippling. How do you do stippling? And what are some examples and different variations? So there are two different types of terms for stippling. They call it dot art or stippling. Now what stippling is, is a series of dots that you draw over and over to form a maybe a type of pattern or to draw a shape to add depth and form to your drawings and to add contrast between the highlights and the shadows. So what I can do here if I'm stippling is I can have a shape with an outline and add my stippling inside that shape and let's say the light source is coming from this direction so my stippling is going to be on this side and that side is going to have less stippling now when you're doing your stippling the slower you go and the smaller the nib of the pen the better the stippling is going to look so if I go really really fast in my stippling it's not going to look as detailed and as good as it would look if I was to do this at a slower pace so for example I'm going to redraw my circle and I'm going to stipple inside of that circle at a slower pace and you'll notice that if you slow down when you're doing your stippling the stippling is going to look a lot more detailed and it's going to look better because you're paying attention to the placement of the dots now I'm actually going to switch over to a different pen the reason I'm switching to a different pen is because I'm using cheap printer paper here and the ink from my fountain pen feathers a lot on it but back to what I was talking about so when you're doing your stippling just pay attention to where you're placing the dots now if you place dots too close to each other or overlapping like that and in that area you want the dots to be spaced out and the reason you might want that is because let's say in your circle in this area here the light isn't it's not in complete light and it's not in complete shadow it's in the area and right in the middle of the circle so the stippling in that area is going to be more spread out whereas the area in shadow is going to be packed together and there's going to be a lot of dots in that area so when you're doing your stippling if you just slow down a little bit and pay attention to where you're putting the dots it's going to look a lot better What I've done here is I've kind of put my dots covering the whole area and then I can get go in back to that circle and I can start on this side and add more dots and slowly reduce the amount of dots I have going in that direction. Now when I'm doing my stippling, you'll notice that as I'm doing it, I'm doing it in a pattern that's like this. The stippling that I do kind of looks like two, like it's in two rows, or you could say it's in like an X pattern, I'm you know, crossing back and forth. Now that's just the technique that I use for when I'm doing my stippling, it's just a pattern that I've come up with that I find the most efficient because I've, I've done it for so long and once you do something over and over it's just ingrained into your muscle memory and so then that pattern and that style of stippling you'll probably use for the majority of all your drawings now you can use any type of um, pattern that you want to use for stippling you could stipple like this up and down you could go in a pattern like that you can stipple like this no kind of random it, it doesn't matter it's completely up to you Whatever pattern works for you, you can use that pattern. Now if you wanted to, for your stippling, you could create a pattern and then for that pattern you can just save that. And what I mean by that is you just get another piece of paper, you do your patterns like this, 
and then you can label that as you know my line pattern and then you can do another one where you go like this and that can be your three line pattern it's just variations of doing lines or say for example you're wanting to stipple something that is a circle It could be that type of pattern. Now when you're doing stippling, and this can be for any type of drawing really, such as mandalas even, but specifically more so for stippling is when I'm doing my stippling, I try to remember the patterns. I try to practice those patterns over and over so that when I go to stipple again, it's just, it's really burned into my memory and I don't forget how to do that pattern because I've done it so many times and I like to write down on a spare sheet of paper or keep it into a sketchbook that I have as a collection of references and in that sketchbook I have the different patterns that I have for the stippling and that helps me so that in the future if I'm doing my stippling it allows me to look back at that reference and say hey I can, I can just look at this and add that into the drawing for example if I'm drawing something and let's say it's a face um, and a portrait, or maybe I'm drawing uh, a car, a tree, a flower, or maybe or maybe it's a, a shape that I haven't stippled before or drawn or done shading for, and I'm not really sure how I want to do that. Now I can look at my sketchbook and use it as a reference. Or maybe I have done it before, but I've kind of forgotten how to do it. Now I can look back at that reference and you know look at how the stippling was done and then be like, oh, hey, now I remember how to do it. And when you're doing your stippling, like I said before, is just take your time. If you're rushing it a lot, and that goes for any drawing that you're doing, the faster you go, the less detailed it's going to be most of the time. So when you're doing your stippling, just slow down and pay attention to where you're placing the dots. Now, if I'm placing the dots really close, you're going to get more shading. Now you space them out more, it's going to give an area that has less detail, there's less dots, so that area is usually the area that's in more light. So one thing I like to use stippling for is when I'm drawing portraits, or maybe I'm doing a, a doodle or an abstract drawing, and you know I've got all my line work and everything, but I want to add stippling into it to make it more... Um, make it more three-dimensional add some depth to it for example if I'm drawing say um, a cloud or it could be like smoke or something it, whatever you want to make it you can make that look much better um, and add more depth to it if I was to add stippling now light's going to be coming from this way, which means that all the stippling on this um, cloud I have here is going to be darkest on this side. Now what I do when I'm stippling, I always like to start from the darkest area and then go to the lightest area. Now you can do it from lighter to darker, but I just find it easier to go from darker to lighter. And how I do that is, um, there's two different ways that you can do it. One way would be to just kind of stipple the whole area a little bit like that. And then go in and add more stippling over it again. And the areas that need it more to where these areas are um, in more shadow. They're not getting as much light, so there's going to be more dots. The second way you could do it would be to just um, start from the darkest area. For example, let me get like another cloud drawn in here. You can start from the darkest area and just go from dark to light without doing a second layer. For example, I'll do. I'll show an example of that. So light is coming from this way. Now I'm just going to do the, all the stippling all at once. 
there's not going to be different layers. I'm not going to go back in and go over it. I'm just doing it as it is. Now this requires a bit more practice, I think, than going in for a second time, like I did in the first example. So you just practice it a bit, and after a while, it'll come to you. You won't have to um, it'll be as focused, and it won't be as difficult. But with anything, the more you practice, the better you get at it. And just keep doing it over and over. Now, my next tip for when you're doing stippling is don't hold the pen too hard. Because if you're holding the pen really hard and you're stippling, you might press too hard into the paper and damage the tip of the pen. You'll um, probably have your hand cramp up very fast doing that as well. And also, when you're doing your stippling, is to make sure that you're using something that doesn't feather a lot. You want something that has um, the ability to draw the dots without any feathering. And that's why I switched from this pen, um, or actually, I switched from the fountain pen to this one. Because I'm just using this as um, my drawing tutorial. So the paper that I'm using here is just cheap printer paper. Now when I'm using this fountain pen because um, the ink is a lot thicker than what's in this, when the ink goes onto the paper, you'll see that it spreads out a lot more. Now if I hold the pen there for too long, you'll see the ink spreads out. And I don't get that even stippling like I can get in the rest of this. And part of the reason for that is because I'm using cheap paper. But if you can't afford expensive paper and you want to do stippling, make sure you're using something you know, such as this um, fine liner. Or actually, you'd probably be best off with a um, technical pen like a Micron. Or you can get an off-brand of it. But when I'm doing this, as you can see, it feathers into the paper because I'm using cheap paper. So make sure that you're paying attention to that as well. Make sure that the paper you're using is the right type of paper depending on how you want to do your stippling. Now if you're doing stippling on cheap paper like this, you're going to have problems with feathering. Now to accommodate for that, what I can do is as soon as I touch the paper with the pen, I can just bring my hand up really fast. Which can be hard because when, you, when you're a beginner, it's going to be hard to... Um, kind of figure out how long you should keep it onto the paper. So when you first start, you might, you know, oh no, I accidentally left it there too long. You might make that mistake. So just make sure you're using um, a pen that doesn't have um, much feathering to it. So probably use a better paper um, and use a technical pen. Now you don't want to use pens that have a flexible nib. For example, I have here is the Newless Ahab. This has a flexible nib to the pen. So if I'm drawing and I'm doing my stippling, you see how big of a, a dot I get there? It's, it's huge compared to the rest of it. And if I do it really quick, I can, you know. But if you're doing um, stippling, you're doing all the stippling over and over and over, and then you're like, oh no. Then you have you know a huge dot, and then it just ruins everything. And you can really tell that with this uh, cheap printer paper. Another tip I have for when you're doing your stippling is don't be in a rush. Take your time. And if you need to, listen to relaxing music or any type of song that you want to listen to. Because stippling is a form of art that takes a lot longer than a lot of other drawing styles. And it requires a lot of patience. So I think that if you have never done stippling before and you're more of a line artist, you might have trouble you know, having the patience with it because you know it takes a lot longer to do it. And so it, it, one thing it will help you with is if you're mostly a line artist, it's going to help you with learning um, shadow areas and highlights and form and, and all that. So if you come from a background you no know, drawing anime, um, or like cartoon characters and stuff like that and you're just a line artist this is going to help you to learn how to draw 
you know, different values and make things more three-dimensional rather than only relying on your line art. So if you are drawing anime or your line artist, you could add this stippling into it to make it look even more realistic. Now that's only if you want to do that. Now, unless you're drawing something for a comic and you don't want the stippling there because it now doesn't really go with the theme with it, you know, then that's understandable. But if you want something to look more realistic, stippling, for the most part, will usually make most drawings look better, um, depending on what it is that you're drawing. So, I like to use stippling for doing portraits. It helps me to learn the different values and um, try to imagine where the light is coming from. For example, if I'm doing a drawing of a portrait and say, um, you know, I'm drawing where the eye is and then like you know you've got your where the nose is at and then top part of the eye and then you know the eyebrow so on and so forth um when you're doing it with lines the thing is is that you know that that's it's one big line so it, it's a lot harder to try and fix that problem to whereas if you're drawing and you're just doing it with stippling um you can just take your time and pay attention to what you're doing and any small dot that might not be in the right place that you want you could you know add a dot kind of spread out from that and then go back in and fix that problem for example let's say I have a dot here that I didn't want I'm like oh I, oh no I messed it up you know that might be what you're thinking if you first start stippling but I can fix that all I have to do is think to myself, okay, where where do I want the eye to be at in this face that I'm drawing for this portrait? And what I could do is that could be where I want the eye. And then notice stipple from there. But then then again if you do have like one dot, then it's not that big of a deal because there's so many dots everywhere, you're not really going to notice that as much as you would if, you know, if you're doing a drawing and there was, you know, lines in it. Because there's just so many dots there that, um, it kind of distracts you from the tiny little mistake that you do have. So, those are some of my tips that I have right now for stippling. If you have any suggestions, um, or any other tips for stippling, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share. And if you could, please subscribe. And if you have any other questions, just go ahead and let me know and I'll get back to them whenever I can. Thank you for watching and hope you all have a great day.